I will show images of frontotemporal dementia. And frontotemporal dementia, or frontotemporal lobal degeneration, is the second most common form of dementia, occurring mainly in younger patients, which makes it even more tragic and devastating than Alzheimer's disease. Frontotemporal dementia is an umbrella term comprising many different forms of dementia affecting the frontal and temporal lobes and the involved regions result in different clinical patterns and different MRI patterns. So for example on the left side there is a flare image of a patient with marked frontal atrophy and also gliosis in the white matter which is consistent with behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia with behavioral problems and also pig's disease is included in this image. Then there's dementia mainly affecting the temporal lobe and if it's on the left side where the speech is located patients present with aphasia and there are different variants. There's a semantic variant where the atrophy is in the left inferior temporal gyrus. Then there's the non-fluent variant where the atrophy is in the superior temporal gyrus, the periinsular region and the frontal region on the left side. And then there's a logopanic variant where the atrophy is more posterior in the temporal lobe towards the angular gyrus. And as you might know, the angular gyrus is the three country border point of the temporal, the occipital and the parietal lobe. So for speech, hearing and vision. And if you have the logopanic variant, you have loss of words. You can also have selective or more pronounced atrophy of the right temporal lobe. And that is more difficult to diagnose clinically. Patients have receptive aphasia so they have problems understanding language and they have problems recognizing faces and several years ago I saw an MRI of a patient with severe knife blade right temporal atrophy and this patient responded to every spam, mail, spam email he received and the psychiatrist said that, that was very classical for right temporal lobe problems. Not only the regions are different from Alzheimer's disease, but also the underlying pathogenic mechanism. In the majority of cases of frontotemporal dementia, there's also a problem like Alzheimer with the intracellular tau protein, which is in the axons. But in contrast to Alzheimer's disease, there's no extracellular amyloid. Then there's also a large part of frontotemporal dementias that have problems with the protein near the nucleus, the TAR DNA binding protein, and then there's a minority of cases in which there's a problem with a protein called fused in sarcoma. And interestingly, this TDP is also involved in the neurodegenerative disease of ALS, or Lou Gehrig disease. The first slide showed an air view of the city of Amsterdam, and if you haven't seen the bit about Alzheimer's disease, it might seem odd. But in neurons, there is this microtubular network that takes care of the intracellular transport. And I made an analogy with the canals of Venice in Alzheimer and now with the canals of Amsterdam in frontotemporal dementia that are vital for the transport and vital for the city, whereas the microtubules are vital for the cell. And if they fail, the cell dies. There's a very interesting technique that's called cryogenic electron microscopy. And what you do is you freeze the proteins and then you can look at their 3D structure with an electron microscope. So this is an article from Nature 2018 where they took a patient with pig disease where you can see the marked atrophy in the frontal lobes. And they isolated the pig bodies from the cells and they consisted of pig filaments and then they looked at the pig filaments with 
this cryo-electron microscope and they noticed that the folding of the abnormal tau was different in Pick's disease than in Alzheimer's disease. And there are many diseases with abnormal tau proteins and they all have a slightly different form. So there's abnormal tau in the neurons in Alzheimer's disease and in Pick's disease, but the abnormal tau can also be located in glial cells, which is the case in uh, corticobasal degeneration. Then it's in the oligodendrocytes and the astrocytes, or it can be only in the astrocytes, as is the case in progressive supranuclear palsy. And this pathologic tau propagates through the brain the same way a prion disease like Hortzfeldt Jacob would. And this is a schematic drawing of the propagation of this abnormal tau. So you have abnormal tau fribbles here, square, and you have normal tau in the next neuron that is round. And what happens is the abnormal tau gets transported in the axon from this neuron towards the synaptic cleft, is in the extracellular space, and then there's uptake by this endocytic vesicle in the next neuron, in the dendrite, and as long as it stays encapsulated, everything is fine. But if this vesicle ruptures, there's pathologic square tau in the next neuron and this causes the normal tau to change its shape as well and then you get growth of these fibrillary tangles and seeding of the tau protein. The other protein I mentioned that might be abnormal in frontotemporal dementia if it's tau negative is TDP and there are also different forms of TDP and in 2010, they tried to establish if there was a distinct pattern of atrophy that corresponded to the type of TDP, and it didn't. So this emphasizes the fact that frontotemporal dementia is a multifactorial disease process, and it's not only determined by the abnormal protein, but there are many other factors that play a role as well. There are, however, if you don't look too much in the details, some patterns that you can recognize. So these are the TDP patterns and these are the tau pathology patterns. And um, as you can see, progressive supranuclear palsy is a tauopathy as well, with involvement of the frontal lobe and the midbrain. And that was previously classified as a Parkinson plus syndrome. And we're going to have a closer look to PSP the next time. Thanks for watching.